keep testing people. Um, let's go ahead and head into the K- KUAM News Zoom room. It has got me on this. Don't wait until it's too late. If you're experiencing confusion, Jay, who is not experiencing confusion? <laughs> right? Who is not? Uh, 730, Father Val Rodriguez, the Catholic School Superintendent, joins us now. Good morning, Father Val. Hi, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Jason and Joe, sir. Thanks for How are uh, you after the holidays. <laughs> we're doing pretty good. I uh, I didn't think it was going to be this fast, though. I feel like we spoke during the holidays and we were kind of feeling, you know, like it was the holidays. And now uh, yeah. <laughs> we've got you on and it, it pretty much looks like we're uh, diving headfirst into uh, another surge. I mean, who knows how it's going to play out, uh, Father Val, but just with the news of Omicron, I mean, this has been in the news for about a month, a little longer. Um, we've been told to prepare for uh, a super typhoon. Uh, two days of triple-digit positive cases. Um, Mm -hmm. How are we feeling at the Catholic school system? Any preparations, any pivots uh, that you guys are are working on? Well, first of all, of course, uh, we know that our students have been on vacation and our staff and uh, faculty, everybody in the school community are, you know, uh, on vacation for two weeks. And uh, it is always a standard uh, procedure that every time we come from this and we expected, of course, as uh, it has been mentioned many times, uh, we expected travels, family gatherings, which is kind of like difficult, of course, to control. So uh, our our administrators, uh, before coming back to school, of course, all of those students who have traveled off island, they were requested, of course, to to go on a quarantine period. And then after five or six days, they will be tested before they are allowed to come to, to school. They should have a negative negative test before the return. And uh, yesterday I sent an email to all our school administrators because of this increase in the cases of positive cases, of course, that they must be very uh, observant, okay? And, and uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, some of our, because we recommended it, I mean, we, we encourage everyone that uh, some of our our faculty members on their own initiative got the, got their own on their test their own testing before returning to school. So we appreciate those who did that. And of course, uh, as we have this increase in the number of positive cases, we ask our school administrators, of course, the everybody in the school community to be more safety. Uh, I mean conscious <laughs> to be observing all of those basic uh, safety protocols that we have in place. I'm so happy that the mitigation plans of our schools have been approved. So, so far, uh, I think our schools are safe, I would say. But of course, Chris, we know that the situation with this COVID is very fluid, very fluid. That's why, as I told the administrators, uh, they should be very, very observant in their uh, the situations in our schools. and. Uh, Things may change, uh, so we will, as the need arise, we will uh, we will uh, adjust them. Uh, Father Val, have you gotten any uh, concerns from parents who are maybe thinking, "Oh, can I go to online?" or what? What's, what's the policy with with that? And then, when do you guys kind of start to entertain those those concerns? You know, because I mean, we just went zero to one hundred so quick, Father Val. You know what I mean? Uh, we went from zero to two hundred cases, right? Zero to another couple hundred. Uh, last night so it it wasn't really gradual so i'm thinking like maybe parents maybe parents are kind of freaking i I don't know are they that's really true i mean that that's kind of like alarming even for me personally when i saw the the biggest spike that's why yesterday i sent that uh, message to our administrators and perhaps we'll have to to as i said uh observe carefully and uh that's what i meant by the situation is very fluid things may change as as we address uh, as the need arises we will address that what are you uh anticipating though um father val uh, and and at like what point do you decide to uh, kind of address it i mean is it going to be like a couple more days of triple digit uh positives or it, it's kind of like you wait and see right i, I cannot really give a an answer that a, a a definitive answer to that question but uh we will really keep our eyes uh, open <laughs> and observant of this. And uh, no, if it if if the cases uh, continue to rise, I think that's something that should be we should really address. Something that should be done. 
So I know that they started uh, the school-based um, vaccination and booster at, uh, I think, Machinana Elementary uh, yesterday, right? And they and Machinana Elementary yesterday, Istanbul today. Right. Are there Three any, to five. Are there any uh, plans to do the same at the Catholic schools, uh, Father? Have you guys already done that? For vaccination, you yeah, mean? Yeah, like school, school-based uh, vaccination. So what they're doing at Machinano and Estumbo is they're doing it, uh, I think it was 3 to um, 6 p.m. after school hours because they're saying uh, that uh, they want it to be more accessible uh, for parents. Yes, yes. Well, as of now, we don't have that schedule of any vaccination clinic in our, in our schools, but uh, we have been, of course, uh, encouraging everyone to get vaccinated in whatever clinic you know, they, that they prefer to go. But we will definitely look at that possibility as we have done in the past. I think uh, our school uh, co- community, Catholic school community, is one of those that really support this, uh, this uh, campaign mm. to get vaccinated. We are happy that, of course, our faculty and staff, our school community, uh, faculty and staff is 97% vaccinated. Uh, that was as of November. So I still have to find out as of today, hopefully that some of them, the remaining percentage, hopefully they get vaccinated by the holiday season, by the Christmas season. So I will find out if there's an increase and we'll continue to encourage them that, you know, to be vaccinated is to be protected. And by doing that, you don't just protect yourself, but you protect your own family, you protect the whole school community. Uh, As St. Francis would say, it is an act of love for others when you get vaccinated. So we continue to encourage that and we will definitely uh, do everything in our, our schools are really working hard. I would like to thank really our liaison officer who work hard even during Christmas break. <laughs> okay, monitoring our students, our staff, if they if they uh, attended like uh, functions and everything that she has to remind them that they by doing that, uh, they put themselves into a possibility of an exposure. And by doing that, they they are, you know, they're not asked. They are actually highly encouraged to get tested when they when they go to those. So even though it was it was break, our liaison officer works hard. What's her name? To make sure, uh, Kathy Castro. Kathy. We really thank her. She she doesn't have any break. <laughs> yeah, perhaps you can ask her one time to be more to be on her, your show. Yeah, perhaps bring her on. Give you more more details. We'd yeah. love to have her. I will tell her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Father Val, what do you hear from, uh, because, you know, when you look at the um, number of uh, kids under 12 and you compare it to the number of kids under 12 who have gotten the vaccine, um, it's not probably not as high as uh, uh, the administration public health would want it. So what do you what do you hear from from parents about vaccinating uh, their kids? Is there is there a lot of hesitancy or just what do they say? No, I I mean, on our population-wise and our studentry in the Catholic schools, I think that the the reaction of the parents are very positive. Mm. They they, they want their kids vaccinated. Of course, it cannot be 100%, but uh, generally, we have a very positive reaction from our school population talking of that age range that they want their kids to be vaccinated. And we're very happy with that. Okay, because that's really basic protection for the kids and for the whole school community. Father Val, is it uh, too early to talk about uh, graduation ceremonies uh, for this year? Because I, I know before this, uh, before this yeah. last couple of days, I want to say yeah. maybe we were thinking. I mean, even I thought I was like, oh wow, this it, I think it's going to be over, right? So was there ever a conversation yeah. about graduations for this school year? Yeah, not yet, uh, because of course. Uh, there are two uh, big uh, concerns we have right now in the archdiocese in the, in the Catholic schools community. Number one, regarding the Catholic schools community, of course, every January is considered, uh, you know, uh, U.S. wide to be Catholic schools week. So we're preparing for that. It begins on January 30. There will be activities in the schools. And hopefully, Chris, as I have promised during my first day of office that I will be visiting the schools. So hopefully by this Catholic Schools Week, I have promised them that I will be come to each school and hopefully celebrate Mass with them, you know, as a community. And then secondly, I, I don't know if you have heard, and I'm sure you have heard already that uh, the whole Universal Church, Catholic Church, uh, is having what we call as the Synod on Synodality. Pope Francis declared that like last October uh, 10, if I remember right, in Vatican, and it's launched in all the dioceses throughout the world on October 17, but for us, we launched it December 7. And so uh, those two main concerns are, 
you know, the urgent concerns as of now because we will be starting that this January. But I'm sure immediately after that Catholic Schools Week, we have to already discuss about graduation and how it is, especially with this COVID situation. Sometimes it's also difficult to plan really long term because as I said, it's very fluid. We just have to really address the, the present situation. Things can just change at the moment. You just have to make decisions and adjustment as of the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your advice to uh, people, Father uh, Val? Because I know as a as a uh, poly, right? A lot of people probably talk to you about how they feel and how uncertain um, these times are. Where we could be, you know, last week uh, talking about what a great time we had on New Year's Eve, and then this week yeah. uh, talking about, oh my God, we had four hundred cases in two days. What are we going to do? You know what I mean? So you're right. It's very fluid. Yeah, well, honestly, Chris, of course, Christmas and New Year, especially in our culture, right? I mean, Chamorro, Guamanian, and Filipino, those are really, for me personally, I feel like, oh boy, how are we going to control these gatherings and everything with, the, with how close our families are, right? I mean, so in a way, I'm not saying that I'm expecting it, but I'm kind of like preparing myself for it. I was thinking like, boy, this is going to like... Uh, so for me personally, this is my personal opinion. Like uh, I'm, I was kind of like expecting there will be an increase, but not this much increase, okay? Because of the uncontrollable gatherings, and I am praying hard. I was so happy last night when I saw the result that there are only 189 compared to 210, right? The other day. Uh, so there's a little decrease. Uh, I would be alarmed if it goes continuously high. I'm hoping that it slowly goes back because the 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 season is over but uh, you know number one because we are we believe in god so that's number one i mean uh, nothing is impossible with god so we continue to be faithful to him and secondly which is very important in a practical uh, point of view of course we should observe the basic protocols you know some people would say chris that uh, it has become normal for us and sometimes I get scared of what they mean by normal. Normal in a sense that they get lax with the safety protocols. Mm -hmm. A few sometimes you would see not wearing masks properly anymore because they feel like oh, this is yeah. already. I, I think that will be like, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. But <laughs> uh, the, when you do those things, wear our masks. Uh, you know, wash your hands, watch your distance. I would personally say as a priest, it's a sign of your love for others. I mean, yeah. that, that you love them, that you care for them. Because if you don't do that, then you just, you're, you're in a way saying as if you don't care for, for the others. Okay? And that's basically, you know, the, the summary of the commandment is love God and love and neighbor. I mean, Father, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I went to the I went to Tumon Bay, which I hardly ever do that. But I went and it was I went when this uh, was that the Vinson, the Carl aircraft. Vincent. Yeah, the USS Carl, Carl Vinson was here, and Father Val. It was like someone said, "Oh, it's like pre-COVID." I was like, "It was worse <laughs> than pre-COVID." This was like Waikiki yeah. times a million. Oh, I never seen that many people in Tumon Bay, and they really, always yeah. say these, these surges follow like a lot of these uh, military. Uh, ship visits, but Boy. but I agree because when I was looking at that and looking at the gatherings, I too was thinking we're going to see a little surge, but like you, I didn't think it was going to be this bad because all we ever hear is vaccinate, vaccinate, boost, boost, we're going to be yes, done with it. Yes. And so, you know, I think people have that in their heads that let me get the shot, we can do what we want because, you know, that's what they were told. Oh, no. You know what I mean? No. And so, I, but you're right, I didn't think it was going to be like this. I thought we were going to see like you know, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 70. So I didn't know it was going to be like both yeah, 200. Yeah, and then, you know, it's even, yeah. I know that you were hopeful that the numbers went down, but when we find yeah. out that they're turning people away from being tested because they're only doing it three hours a day, to me, that's, oh, a, wow. that's also alarming. That means that we don't really yeah. have an accurate picture, right? I hope that the slight decrease is not due to that. I, I'm praying hard. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all pray <laughs> harder. <laughs> I'm praying hard that it's Ooh. not due to they are <laughs> not allowing people to get tested. Yeah, but uh, I, I hope that the, the decrease will continue to slow down. Yeah. You know, during the Christmas uh, season, 
I, I of course personally I, I avoided going out going to social gatherings right. although as a priest you know it's kind of difficult for us to do that yeah. because people will definitely as a priest father can you come and when they don't come of course there's a feeling of father <laughs> I snubbed our our ignored our invitation something like that but you know going to public places I really avoided that the first uh, after all of this season that season the first time I went to the mall because I what I needed to to buy something was was the other day, and when I went there, I'm so happy that there's few people already. Because oh, you missed it. The Christmas season <laughs> because the Christmas season. I'm hearing my friends. Oh boy, it's crowded and everything. I said, oh my gosh. So yeah. So our people should I think this Omicron or without Omicron. Mm. Okay. Bottom line. My dear, my dear people of God, my dear friends, I mean, to show our love for one another, it's really the basic uh, safety protocols. Wear your mask properly. Watch your distance. Sanitize. Okay, so I think those are the three basic things that we should really observe. And uh, when things go not in a better situation, then that's when we have to adjust more. Right. Father Val, you're lucky you didn't go uh, Christmas shopping at the mall because I, I went, right, sir? I had anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Me too. Me don't too. breathe, don't breathe, I mean... don't breathe. <laughs> Father Val, before we yeah. let you go, I mean, is there anything else on the schools and that uh, maybe a message to parents? Because I know that parents are probably like uh, maybe just a little anxious with these numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, Chris, I want to address our school community, to, referring, of course, to the school administrators, to the faculty and staff. We all know the situation that we are right now. I know that we have all of the safety protocols in place, mitigation plans and everything. I, I have seen that in the past we have done really best to make sure that our school community is safe for our students because we believe that face-to-face -face learning is uh, really the, the norm in education. Okay, so uh, now that there's an increase, I, I ask you to be more observant, to be more strict perhaps in observing all of those uh, safety protocols that we have. And our, our, our parents, we, we ask you to be to be more uh, understanding to the safety protocols that our schools are doing and imposing. Rest assured that we do those things that because, you know, we want to impose things, but we want to make sure that our schools are really safe for your kids. It's, it's for all of us. Those things that we are doing are for all of us. And we assure you that our school administrators, the whole school, the Catholic education community is trying our best to make our schools safe, okay? Uh, I would like to, as I have already mentioned, I would like to thank Kathy Castro for really working hard. She doesn't have any break at all, Kathy, for all the things that you do for the safety of our schools in the archdiocese in general. He, she's not just a liaison officer in this COVID concerns of the Catholic schools, but of the archdiocese of Agania in general. So Kathy Castro, thank you very much for all the things that you do. We continue to work hard to make our uh, Catholic uh, schools a safe environment for the learning and formation of our students. So to you, Chris and uh, Jason, Joe, sir, thank you very much for always oh, yeah. having the opportunity to share. Oh, Father Val, this might be, I don't know if this is in your uh, lane, but I just thought I would ask, uh, what is the, um, with the funerals, right? So what is the protocol now for uh, the churches? And is there a backup that you're hearing about? No, uh, there are no so far uh, any norm that has been issued by the archdiocese. We are the same safety protocols. Of course, we don't allow viewing in the churches. Uh, funerals will just be as they come, go straight to the to the mass. Then after the mass, we just go straight out to to the interment. So so far, that's what we have. We don't even allow you know eulogies and everything in order to avoid the length of time of being together in a closed area, all of those things. So far, I have not received any information from the Archdiocese regarding changes in those okay. protocols. Okay, okay. Thank you, yeah. Father Val. Thank you. God bless you all. You too, and thank you for Merry coming Christmas, on. Merry Christmas. Happy oh, New Year. Father, hey, Father. Could, you, could you lead us in a prayer before you go? Uh, because, you know, you never know. Of course. That will be an honor. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we continue to praise, worship, and thank you for you always give us the blessings that we need in order to strive to be better persons, to be better disciples of yours. Loving Father, in a special way, we thank you 
for the gift of sending your only begotten Son to be our Savior as we continue to celebrate this Christmas season. Loving Father, as we continue to experience this pandemic of COVID-19, we beg you to give us the good health of mind and spirit and body so that we may be able to fight against this COVID-19 and be victorious according to your will and with your, with your help. Loving Father, we beg you, we ask you, of course, through the intercession of Santa Marian Kamalen to intercede for us, to put an end to this pandemic. We truly believe that it is through your power that we can put an end to this guide our religious leaders as well as our government leaders to always make decisions according to your will and for the safety of everyone that in spite of what we experience right now this pandemic we can live as brothers and sisters according to your will and according to for our well-being bless all of us and help us to have to guide guide us to observe all the things that we should be doing for the safety of everyone as a sign of our love and care for one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Viva Santa Maria Kamali. Viva. Viva. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, Father Beautiful Mal. prayer, Father. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. There you go. Father Val Rodriguez, Catholic Schools, Superintendent. Oh. You can go get the vaccine, get the boost, and you get the spiritual boost, too. That's it. Yeah, we got, got, our, yeah, we got our, our Jesus boost in here. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break, guys. 751 here on the link. We're brought to you by Pacific Points, Cabo Enterprises, ITD, and Jack in the Box. Uh, who's coming up on the show? We got Dr. Ho Wen, the former uh, Physician Advisory Group uh, Chair, head of American Medical Center Clinics, where... Uh, they are being slammed with a lot of sick visits. So and we'll you talk. said he went right to work after he yeah. got, like, literally got off the plane and then yep. just like hit the ground running, right? Uh, Senator Joanne Brown uh, jumping in to catch on uh, catch up in the new year. Also, uh, Wayne Paselli, your favorite of Animal Wellness Action, has got an announcement uh, this morning. He's jumping on, and then uh, we'll get Jesse Rosario Chuby of uh, Boca Box to talk about the new episode of Boca Talk.